vision Updated October 25th, 2017 154,541 Micah White is something of a pariah these days. An activist since the age of 13, White co-founded the Occupy Wall Street movement in 2011. He now openly considers it a failure. White argues established activist organizations have ossified and become dominated by groupthink. A lot of people who protest against the status quo aren't willing to protest against the status quo of protest. They don't want to shake themselves up, he says. At the heart of White's disenchantment lies the sense that huge public rallies and colorful street protests no longer result in meaningful change. They're now exercises in what he terms social marketing. Activism has become about spreading ideas, changing the way people see the world, he says. Those are positive and good things, but activism is supposed to be about positive, transformative social change that is inherently political. White believes the expectations of participants have also shifted. We've started doing these large spectacular marches, whose goal is not to actually overthrow the government or anything like that, but to be a beautiful experience, he says. Going to a protest march is like the equivalent of going to see a show or a concert, it's a way of connecting with one's friends. The great revolutionaries of the 20th century, he says, lived under tremendous hardship. They never talked about the goal of revolution and activism being to somehow feel good, White says. The Occupy Wall Street movement spread across the Western world, but according to White, its lack of a coherent political strategy eventually saw it falter with little to show for its sound and fury. It's now resigned to activist folklore. You know, Occupy Wall Street famously could not even decide on its one demand, he says. White now advocates for direct political involvement. We live in a world where you can gain power either through winning elections or winning wars. It seems to me that we should try to win elections, he says. His approach mirrors that of the right-wing Tea Party movement, which gained enormous power in the United States by pursuing bottom-up, iterative political change. The movement built its power base by initially targeting small-town politics, getting supporters elected to positions on school boards and local councils. It then built its strength from there. But White prefers to draw analogies with the populist Five Star Movement in Italy or the left-wing Podemos in Spain social movements that have also won elections, where power is still held by the grassroots, not by their elected representatives. One of the rules of the social movement getting started should be once you are elected, you are a delegate of our movement, not a representative of our movement. You have to take the big questions back to us, he says. The craft of non-aggressive activism London-based activist Sarah Corbett is another lifelong activist who has abandoned traditional protest. The craftivist collective she runs incorporates craft activities into political messaging and campaigning. The collective takes a deliberately non-aggressive and non-adversarial approach. Instead, they try to build relationships with power holders, seeing them as critical friends rather than aggressive enemies. Corbett is particularly proud of the success her movement had in persuading a major British retailer to pay the living wage to its employees. The company's 14 board members each received a small gift box containing a handwritten letter and a handkerchief inscribed with the message Don't Blow It. We know your jobs are really tough but we really hope that you use your power to help the most vulnerable people. Corbett says the firm's management eventually agreed to talks and quickly changed their position. It didn't feel ethical to scream at people and label them as the evil ones, when most of the time with injustices, we are all part of it in one shape or form, she says. But while the craftivist approach might be meek, it isn't weak.
According to Corbett, it follows the non-violent tradition of Martin Luther King and Gandhi. If we want the world to be more beautiful, kind and just, which I think all activists do, then our activism should be beautiful and it should be kind and it should be just, or fair, she says. We should treat people how we want to be treated. Craftivism also focuses on the need for personal commitment. Corbett says it emphasizes physical involvement, thereby avoiding the easy activism of many online and league campaigns. I do feel like we need a way for people to engage more deeply and empower themselves, rather than be treated as activist robots or end up doing clicktivism or slacktivism, which is often what we end up doing, she says. Not looking away in a digital edgy arguably the most successful protest campaign of recent times is the Black Lives Matter BLM movement. Professor Nicholas Mirzeff from New York University describes it as a new form of visual activism. He says its success lies in combining both digital and physical campaigning in a way that focuses on fighting injustice. By using images of black oppression to continually and systematically confront U.S. authorities, he argues BLM draws on the successful experience of the civil rights movement of the 1960s. BLM's use of social media to maintain a focus on violence against black Americans, Mirzef says, prevents authorities and the population at large from looking away. We have often been told that certain things should NT be seen. Violence, in particular, should never be depicted. It might upset and frighten us, Mirzef says. Yet what Black Lives Matter wants to say to us is that this is happening so frequently, this is happening so often, this is the country in which you live. Black Lives Matter began as a hashtag campaign. It spread quickly, but Mirzef says it would have fighted long ago had it not been married to a corresponding ongoing physical campaign. What's so crucial about making visual activism work is that it catalyzes real-life social activism through social media, he says. If it's just on social media, then very little will follow from that. But if, by seeing things, people are impelled to take action themselves, and they are helped to find out how to take that action themselves, then change can result. So, the future of effective, meaningful activism looks likely to be less aggressive, less about personal experience and more about targeted and defined objectives. Technology will enhance its effectiveness, but physical commitment and effort will be needed to underpin its success. Topics Community and Society Political Parties World Politics United States First posted October 25, 2017 073000